guess we'll start today with a little water obstacle. Breakups in full swing, which means all that snow has got to go. Unfortunately, the full fat will just drive around this stuff. Well, as you can see, breakup is what we call it when all the snow melts, turns to water, and needless to say, turns everything into mud and muck. But breakup is definitely upon us. And honestly, we couldn't be happier. That means that spring is here, summer should be following, though, according to the weather, there's a possibility of snow next week which would be slightly depressing. But I got the full fat out today. It's been sitting in the garage for the last 20 days because, well, the adventure said, it's my turn, it's my turn. And so we've been taking the adventure out every day, getting some miles on it, enjoying that experience. But full fat said, hey, I get to play too. So we're out on the full fat today. And I thought I would think about the question of my cycling history. And I think everybody has a story to tell about their cycling and why they ride and when it started and stopped and started again. So I thought I'd give you a little history of my cycling so like a lot of us i'm going to jump back to the mid 70s and in the mid 70s as a much younger version of what you're seeing now i saved my money i grew up with my little schwinn stingray and about sixth grade it was time to i guess move to a big person bike so at that time, what you did is you saved your money and you either went in and bought a Schwinn Varsity 10 speed or, well, if you wanted to save that extra, oh, I want to say maybe $20, you could get yourself a Schwinn Continental. And Continental just sounded better than Varsity to me. So saved my money, saved my money, finally had enough, went down to the local store, put in my order because you had to order them. I thought I was getting a brown Schwinn Continental, but apparently they interpreted it as burgundy. So I got myself a burgundy red Schwinn Continental. A little disappointment there because I'm not a fan of red. But boy, sixth grade, have the Schwinn Continental. School at that time, which seemed like it was forever away, about a mile by today's standards. You know, rode that bike back and forth. Boy, freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. And then like a lot of us, a few years passed and all of a sudden it was time for, well, a different mode of transportation. And that's about the time the driver's license started coming into place. But one key event that happened between those two things for me is I signed up to go on a bike tour. Now in the 70s, a bike tour basically meant that you took whatever 10 speed version you had, you either strap things on with rope or in my case, I found a kit for bike panniards, which seemed highly exotic. I mean, that was completely European. But came home and we sewed some bike panniards and put them on the rack. And I took off on my first bike tour. No clue what I was doing. Basically, one a semi-adult leader. There were about eight of us teenage kids. And we embarked upon a 400-mile trip with six major mountain passes. The first mountain pass we went over was 
Trail Ridge Road, which is, I think, still the highest paved road in North America. So we uh, cycled ourselves over the top of that, came flying down the backside. You know, brakes smoking, rims were probably way too hot, you know. But hey, you're a teenager, what else could you do? So in the ensuing number of days, did 400-mile trip, did those six mountain passes, and absolutely thoroughly enjoyed that experience. But in the 70s and going into the 80s, that's just not something a lot of people did. So the cycling became dormant. Time goes on, get older, graduate, joined the military, got married. Now we're up into the mid-late 80s when, of all things, I was able to trade a beaver pelt, which I'd gotten from a guy I worked with, for a bike frame. So I traded for a bike frame, put some wheels on it, and started commuting the about eight miles one way to where I was working on the Air Force Base and commuted for a couple of years and said, boy, you know, cycling, I really enjoy this. After that, a couple more 400-mile little trips in Alaska down to a community of Toke, which is 200 miles away. Did that a few times. Did a trip down to Denali National Park. Things are moving on. We're getting older. Decided it was time to get my wife into the concept of cycling. And so, how do you do that to somebody who... Their idea of cycling was... Remember that stuff when you were a teenager just because you couldn't drive anymore? Well, that's what we had. And so I made that now wise decision. I took my wife to Hawaii. So we packed the two bikes, my touring bike at that time, her kind of hybrid bike, stuck them in a box and went to the island of Kauai and spent six days cycling around the island of Kauai. And I got to tell you, if there's a way to convince your, your wife, your husband, to get into cycle touring with you, take them to Hawaii or take them somewhere exotic, someplace where the biggest decision is, if we cycle 12 miles today, we can get to this beach. But if we cycle 30 miles, we can get to an even better beach. And so the the game began. So that was kind of a cool trip. And then six months later, I don't know if it was the power of persuasion. I don't know if it was the unrelenting husband. But all of a sudden in 1999, it was time for the big trip. And so my wife's second tour on a bike was a little trip from the Oregon coastline to the state of Colorado. So we did 1,400 miles. Uh, we averaged about 89, 90 miles a day, mainly because the children were in Colorado and Mama Bear, she wanted to get to her kids. And so that's what we did. The trip was gonna continue, but well, actually it did for me. I kept going because the goal was Washington, D.C. But unfortunately, 600 miles later, I got to the state of Iowa and they were in a massive, massive heat wave. And it was bad enough that the temperature was 108, but with the heat index, it was putting it up in the 120, 125 zone. And after six days of doing that across the state of Nebraska, I hit the Iowa line and my body simply shut down. So that trip ended there, but not to be undone. Two years later, my wife and I flew back to Colorado. We jumped back on our two-wheel recumbents at the time. And then we finished that trip from Colorado to Washington, DC. So we finished our cross-country trip. So after that, the girls got older. It was time to bring our children along. So their first tour was when they were 10 and 12, and we started on the coast of Washington and Anacortes. The goal was Montana. Four days in, coming down a mountain pass, I had a tire suffer a catastrophic failure, and I took a, a just nasty, nasty crash. Enough that the trip was over at that point, but not to be, you know, put off. Years later. We flew into Baton Rouge and we cycled up to Nashville, Tennessee on the Natchez Trace. Girls enjoyed that thoroughly, so a little time later we flew to Charleston, South Carolina. And we uh, cycled up to Washington, D.C. 
16 day trip, 14 days of rain. Fortunately, it didn't dissuade the children too bad because in a few years later, we were in St. Louis and we decided to attempt the Lewis and Clark Trail. And so we rode that. We got to the Black Hills of South Dakota before it was simply time. We had been fighting headwinds for a week and the team said, you know, let's stop while we're having fun. And then a few years after that, the last trip we had with our girls before, you know, they got old, graduated, married, all that stuff, was we were able to fly into, into, where was it? Minnesota, yeah. And then we cycled across Minnesota, across Wisconsin, across part of Michigan, actually ended at the TerraCycle factory in Michigan, which is where we start getting into our recumbent trikes. So that's a little bit of my history which is why I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy riding. Just absolutely thoroughly enjoy riding. My wife and I have done two other trips since then where we cycled the New England states and we got a chance to go across the Erie Canal in New York, which that's a premier, premier ride if you're looking for one. And then we have plans to finish those undone states that we have. So we still have about 10 states, 10 or 11 states that we haven't cycled. The plans are in the way, so as soon as travel becomes doable and everything works, we'll get those states done too. So I'm going to leave you there. That's my history. So, boy, you know, if you get a chance down in the comments, I would love to hear your history of cycling. I have a feeling that we all probably started back in that whatever decade that was with that Schwinn Continental, that Schwinn Varsity the bug hit and suddenly that led to something else, to something else, to now way down the road. It's just something we do. So thanks for coming along. I'll show you a little more footage of what I'm riding today, which is a sloppy, muddy, wet mess. And until next time, thanks. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed, if you could, that would really, really help. But I like the comments better. So leave me a comment, tell me your history. Till the next time, see you down the road.